A 70-year-old Caucasian woman, Margaret Marks, presents to you with complaints of pain in her right hip without a history of trauma. She discloses that the pain was initially noticed roughly two years ago and has gradually progressed over time, significantly worsening within the last two months. When asked specifically about the pattern of pain, Margaret describes it as an ache all over the right hip, which is particularly worse in the morning, yet resolves after 30 minutes. She's also noticed that the pain increases after prolonged periods of standing, sitting or walking. When asked about comorbidities, Margaret informs you about her diagnosed osteoarthritis of the hands alongside type 2 diabetes which is linked to her obesity. As a retired receptionist, she lives a particularly sedentary lifestyle but does enjoy gardening and walking her dog. On top of complaints of pain, Margaret also finds that there is pronounced stiffness in the affected hip, creating difficulties when walking, standing from a seated position and squatting down when she is gardening. She is finding that both the pain and stiffness are preventing her from performing numerous activities of daily living and causing negative lifestyle changes, posing further risks to her health. From observations made prior to examining the patient, you notice that they sat in a reclined position, took a significant amount of time to stand, and required the use of their arms to raise them out of the sitting position. It is also identified that the patient walks with a significant limp, favouring their left leg, and that notable discomfort is shown on the patient's face. Based on the information gathered from the patient's subjective reports, along with the basic information ascertained throughout observation, it is suspected that the patient's symptoms are caused by a type of degenerative joint disease such as osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is characterised by pain, stiffness and crepitus in the affected joint. The American College of Rheumatology established several criteria for the diagnosis of osteoarthritis, including pain, a reduced range of movement and morning stiffness all of which are present with our patient. Other factors such as our patient's old age and a known history of osteoarthritis are indicative that their pain is determined by osteoarthritis. This assumption then informs the, the types of physical examinations that will proceed. The physical examination process begins with palpation of the affected area. With the patient lying in a supine position, we initially assess the area of concern, looking for any areas of localised swelling and discoloration. With obtained consent from the patient, the affected area is then palpated, with regions of temperature change and bony landmark orientation noted. Areas of tenderness and deformity are similarly recorded. During palpation, muscles are also assessed, searching for shortening, tenderness and atrophy. The affected joint is compared to the same joint on the contralateral limb, assessing for any notable asymmetry. As osteoarthritis causes stiffness, which therefore reduces the joint's ability to move through numerous planes of motion, joint range of mo movement testing is necessary. The test starts with the patient performing active flexion, extension, rotation, abduction and adduction. A test is deemed positive if there is a significant reduction in the joint's ability to move through these planes, particularly internal rotation, or if there is a presence of pain which stops the full movement from occurring. Once a positive active joint range of movement test occurs, the test is performed passively by the assessor to further assess and record the reduction of the joint's range of movement with a goniometer. Passive range of movement testing allows us to feel for crepitus, stiffness in the joint, which also deems that the test is positive. Hip quadrant testing is also beneficial in this situation as it detects the generation of the hip joint. A positive test is determined by the presence of pain, a reduction in the hip's range of movement, or if the assessor feels crepitus throughout the examination. The exam involves moving the leg through abduction and adduction when it's in a flex position. Similar to the hip quadrant test, the Patrick or Faber test assesses hip joint function and associated degeneration. A positive test occurs if the patient reports feeling any pain throughout the movement or if there is a notable reduction to the range of movement possible. Overall, osteoarthritis is characterised by a reduced range of movement, crepitus pain and stiffness in the effective joint. Testing measures these four parameters and can provide a sound assumption towards the presence of osteoarthritis. However, 
In order to confirm a diagnosis, further radiological examination is needed. X-ray images of the affected joint need to identify both joint space narrowing and osteophyte formation in order to confirm the diagnosis.